after a panchayat in Mathura decided to impose 21,000 rupees on girls who will be seen talking on mobile phones while walking on the street, State Minister Rita Bahuguna Joshi has said action will be taken against those going against the law. Let's listen in to Rita Bahuguna. गैर कानूनी है इसको लड़कियों को तरजीह नहीं देनी चाहिए और क्योंकि लड़कियों को ये धमकी दी गई है तो ये सरकारी ये एक मेरे ख्याल से पुलिस का मामला बन जाता है क्योंकि धमकी देना उचित नहीं है और इसमें निश्चित रूप से उसके खिलाफ कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए पंचायतों को ये अधिकार नहीं है कि वो कानून को हाथ में ले पंचायतों का अधिकार नहीं कि वो कानून बनाए पंचायतों को देश के कानून से चलना पड़ेगा ये देश का कानून महिलाओं को बराबरी का अधिकार देता है स्वच्छता दे स्वतंत्रता देता है वो स्वेच्छा से जहाँ चाहे जा सकती हैं अगर वो अपराधिक कार्य में लिप्त नहीं है या वो कोई अपराधी नहीं है या वो कानून नहीं तोड़ती हैं तो उनके खिलाफ कोई कार्रवाई नहीं की जा सकती है ना होनी चाहिए So are we then saying that Ahmadullah Khan will now be sacked? Are we also saying that he will have that power and position in the party where he has a direct contact with the volunteers because those were certain very tall demands made by Kumar Vishwas? Well, we are still waiting the exact details and specifics of exactly what has been decided on and whether Kumar Vishwas has in fact seized on the entire demand to sack Amanatullah or not. But uh, we will have a clarity on that in a while once uh, Kumar Vishwas and uh, Manish Surya give us that official statement. But yes. definitely in terms of the fact that Kumar Vishwas will not apologize for that video that he put out, hmm. the fact that there needs to be more contact with volunteers, the party needs to take into account the ground situation and not uh, live in a fool's paradise when it comes to, uh, you know, what their connect with the voter is and to the changing the organizational structure per se. These are the main things that Kumar Vishwas has been putting out and this is definitely something that they have come to a compromise with. Kumar Vishwas may have eased down on the Amanatullah stand, but uh, we will know for sure in a short while from now. Well, the Congress leader Ajay Makan has now withdrawn his resignation, saying that the Congress has had an improved vote share in the recent MCD polls. Makan added that the party would continue to play the role of a constructive opposition. Ajay Makan has also said that if Rahul Gandhi had asked him, it is actually Rahul Gandhi who's asked him to continue as the DPCC uh, president. Samia Kapoor uh, with me on the phone line for more on this. Uh, Samia, we've, we're given to understand that the reason that's been cited by Ajay Markan is that there has been an improved vote share that the Congress party received in the MCD elections. Now, you know, earlier also when he was going to put in his papers that uh, I remember, you know, the discussion was around whether this Congress party will actually accept something like this. Well, uh, that is the Delhi Pradesh Congress Committee Chief Ajay Markan, who held the press conference a short while back, reiterating his position that he continues to be the president of Delhi Pradesh Congress Committee as his resignation was rejected by the Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi. Now, they definitely are claiming that Congress's performance in the MCD election uh, did have a bearing of an improvement, which may be a marginal one from 9% to 22%. And that is something that Rahul Gandhi has asked uh, Ajay Markan to continue with to further uh, the Congress's performance in Delhi as they believe that many of the traditional voters of the Congress party who were disenchanted with Ahmadni party did come back to voting for the Congress party. And uh, here on was the uh, Delhi in charge, P.C. Chako, who had also tendered his resignation alongside Ajay Markan, will continue to hold their position and work towards the Delhi Assembly election. They have been given the task of... Uh, better performance of the Congress party in Delhi, whether mm. it's going to be a direct competition with the Aam Party and the BJP, where the Congress will be fa fa uh, facing a tough 
fight because the BJP has clearly surged ahead in comparison to both the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress. But the Congress is still willing to uh, continue and be in the fray when it comes to fighting and being relevant as far as politics is concerned in Delhi because in the last assembly election, Congress Party couldn't even secure one seat in 2015. So it's going to be an uphill task for uh, Jay Markan as he continues to hold the position as the Delhi Pradesh Congress Committee Chief after that order coming from Rahul Gandhi directly. Now, now, Samya, this also, you know, uh, the fact that he's been asked to continue and so has PC Chaku being asked to continue, does that also perhaps mark, you know, the fact that all those people who were sidelined earlier, including Sheila Dixit, will continue to remain on that side? I'm going to come back to you in just a bit. Let's listen into the reasoning that's been given by RJ Markin earlier. हमारे जो रिजल्ट्स हैं उन्होंने कहा कि रिजल्ट्स जो हैं वो इनकरेजिंग हैं हम लोगों को 9 से 22 परसेंट हम लोग आए हैं तो ये इनकरेजिंग रिजल्ट्स हैं तो उन्होंने कहा है कि मेरे को कंटिन्यूस ये करना चाहिए ताकि हम इसको लॉजिकल कंक्लूजन पे हम लोग ये करके आए जिसमें कांग्रेस पार्टी नंबर एक पे दिल्ली में आ सकती well, Samia, if I could come back to you now. Samia, earlier I was asking you about the rivalry that existed between Sandeep Dixit as well as Ajay Markan. Now, he'd hit out at Ajay Markan after the MCD uh, election results. But now this patching up uh, between, uh, you know, the, con uh, the decision that's been taken by the Congress. Okay, uh, we're going to go back to Samia in just a bit, but we are getting more breaking news. The Pakistan envoy Abdul Basit has been summoned by the Home Ministry. He's, uh, we are told, reaching the South Block. Let me go across uh, to our National Affairs Editor, Shrinjoy Chaudhary. Shrinjoy, give us more details about uh, uh, the content of this meeting. And is it going to be made extremely clear in this meeting by, uh, you know, uh, South Block and by the Home Ministry uh, that Pakistan cannot continue its denials? Well, very simply, uh, the issue is the mutilations. You mm. cannot kill and mutilate South Block. Two Indian Jawans and uh, then claim that, no, no, we haven't done anything like that. We are such a good army. We wouldn't do it to anyone, not even India. So that is something India has taken very strong offense to. And clearly, this is going to be a very strong protest that will be lodged before the High Commissioner of uh, Abdul Basit. And he will be told, told in no uncertain terms that there is no question uh, of anything like this happening. And if it mm. does happen, India will take very strong action on the ground and also diplomatically. Right. Uh, now, Shrinjo, as you're pointing out, you know, uh, Abdul Basit, of course, has been summoned earlier also on various issues uh, with Pakistan. Now, how is the Home Ministry uh, planning to make it extremely clear that uh, this is something that will not be tolerated at all? Abdul Basit in the past, of course, has evaded, uh, you know, really speaking on this issue. And we've seen the kind of denials come in from Pakistan already. Well, Pakistan may deny it. But India will still have to make a point. Just mm. because Pakistan has denied something does not mean it's true. India will have to make it very clear that, mm. well, we have the evidence, we have mm. the knowledge, and you jolly well not do what you have been, done, what you've been doing, because if you do, uh, then very, very serious consequences await. All right, uh, Shinjo Chaudhary bringing us the latest. Now, the Pakistan envoy, Abdul Basit, has been summoned by the Home Ministry. He is reaching uh, the South Block. As we are talking, uh, India's main concern right now will be the mutilation. That is something that will be uh, brought up uh, in this meeting, and India will be sending a very clear message out to Pakistan that this is something uh, that uh, will not be tolerated. And, of course, you know, it will take uh, uh, perhaps a downslide in relationships. Now, uh, you know, Shinjo, even as uh, we are told uh, that this is something that will be communicated. We have already done that on several levels. Now, we had a DGMO meeting. Okay. Okay, we seem to have lost that. Uh, we had a meeting, as I was saying, between the two DGMOs, a telephonic conversation, where also India communicated. Now, the Apex Court has expressed its displeasure at the Tamil Nadu government over the lack of action in the, in the state. Uh, the Minister of State, in fact, uh, Kamaraj's case, uh, the court questioned the state government on the delay in filing an FIR, also asked the state government to file an inquiry report to the minister 
is a close aide of Sasikala on TTV Dhan Akran. And he is accused of cheating a real estate businessman. Minakshi now joining me on the phone line. Minakshi, you were in court. And it's, uh, it seems another blow to uh, the Tamil Nadu government uh, who've been virtually reprimanded by the Supreme Court for failing to file an inquiry, in fact, against this uh, minister. Well, absolutely, Biren. And, uh, you know, what is very interesting is, uh, again, uh, perhaps for the second time in quick succession, we are seeing a state government come in for a reprimand. Our viewers will recall under Akhilesh Yadav's uh, regime, it was the Gaitri Prajapati case which had invoked the ire of the top court. And today, again, the Supreme Court in Kamraj's case has pulled up or lashed out at the Tamil Nadu government's uh, purported inaction uh, over delay in registration of FIR. The Supreme Court is of the opinion just because a person is a minister, uh, he cannot be above the law of the land, and the court has expressed concern at the gravity of the nature of allegations, given the fact that the complainant's uh, life uh, is allegedly at risk. So, Supreme Court clearly indicating, even in the past, in uh, this particular case, that it would not hesitate to transfer the entire case to CBI if Tamil Nadu government does not act fast. So, they have time till Monday to come out with a detailed inquiry report to impress the Supreme Court, but clearly top court was today extremely dissatisfied uh, with the inaction on part of the Tamil Nadu government. A meeting, a high-chaired meeting, in high-powered high meeting, in fact, on internal security is now underway, chaired by the Home Minister, NSA Ajit Doval, Home Secretary IB and Raw Chief are also present at that meeting. Aditi will be joining me on the phone line. Uh, with details on what's going on in that meeting. This is, uh, as we understand, a regular meeting. However, uh, Kashmir will also be probably be on the agenda. Aditi, over to you. Uh, in fact, as we speak, the meeting is still underway. It's an internal security meeting being chaired by Home Minister Raj Rajri. Also in attendance is uh, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, the IP Chief, the Raw Chief, and also Home Secretary who are present in this meeting. Now remember that uh, Jammu and Kashmir has been one of the key focus areas for uh, the Home Ministry at this point in time. Uh, yesterday as well, uh, we saw uh, the, uh, the the Governor of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, N. N. Bora, who met uh, Home Minister Rajnath Singh, and the message from the central government was very clear this time around that uh, the situation in Jammu and Kashmir needs to be resolved. The peace and normalcy needs to be uh, restored as soon as possible. There should be no compromise as far as the security apparatus in the state of Jammu and Kashmir is concerned. So in this particular internal security meeting also, we can expect uh, the issue of Jammu and Kashmir and what really are the developments uh, on the ground with the V security apparatus, what really is the state government doing? Because remember uh, that uh, the Home Minister has also told the Governor and the Chief Minister of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti, that the Home Ministry should be updated at a at regular intervals as to what really is happening on the ground, what really is the state government and the local uh, Jammu and Kashmir police doing to ensure that normalcy and the peace could be restored, what kind of action are they taking, ag are they taking against stone filters, whether there is any strict or stringent action that the state government has initiated, because the central leadership has made it very clear that stone filters will not be forgiven, they will be treated on the same platform on which terrorists are treated uh, by the Indian forces. Abroad. Bhavtosh bringing us those details, in fact, this morning uh, of this businessman. In fact, they've made the, the ED has now made an arrest. Uh, this businessman is accused of embezzling funds to the tune of 966 crore rupees. Bhavtosh now joining me on the phone line. Bhavtosh, give us the details. Virin, uh, Vijay, uh, Vijay Chaudhary was arrested uh, by ED uh, from Mumbai and uh, expected that later in the day, it will be produced before the concerned court in Indore where the case has been registered by the enforcement directorate. Now, ED has said that he has not only uh, defrauded banks of 960 crore rupees, but then he laundered the money abroad by uh, opening uh, fake companies, uh, not only in uh, US, where he opened 15 uh, uh, fake uh, companies and offshore accounts, but also he opened uh, such, uh, such offshore accounts and companies in uh, Zimbabwe, in UAE, and also in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, they have said that he is a property developer who uh, first submitted fake documents to take loans. Uh, he took loans worth at least 960 crore rupees. And when it was, when he was asked to pay the money, he, uh, he absconded. Uh, the total uh, fraud in this case is said to be around 2,650 crore rupees. Right. Uh, certainly a sensational uh, development. The businessman now been arrested for Mumbai after the enforcement directed registered a case against him in the national capital. Thanks, Bhavtosh, for joining us.
income tax department has been arrested by CBI in a corruption case. That's the latest that we have got. Uh, top IT officials arrested in Mumbai. Uh, let me now go across to my colleague uh, Bhavtosh who is with us on the phone line. Bhavtosh, get us up to speed with the development. But the CBI has said that uh, six persons have been arrested in this case, uh, two from Vishakhapatnam and four from uh, from Mumbai. In fact, uh, the CBI has said that uh, the, uh, the official who has been arrested is uh, Income Tax Commissioner's appeal in Mumbai. Uh, he has been identified as B.B. Rajendra Prasad. Uh, he's an I uh, IRS officer. Uh, the, the details, uh, uh, CBI has not shared many details with us, but they have said uh, that they have seized cash at least... Uh, 1.5 crore rupees. Uh, they have said it was a. Uh, it, it, uh, the arrests have taken place in case of corruption, and uh, B.B. Rajan Prasad was trying to benefit some private individuals. Okay, so top IT official uh, getting arrested in Mumbai. Bhavtosh, uh, any more details uh, that we have in this case? Income tax uh, commissioner appeal. Uh, all the all the notices or all the fines that are imposed by the income tax department. Goes directly to uh, directly to appeals commissioner, and he's uh, he also uh, heads the appellate yes. tribunal. So what the CBI is saying is that he could be involved in a case of corruption pending uh, okay. uh, uh, pertaining to appeals. Okay, many thanks, Bhavtosh, for joining us and getting us those details. In more breaking news coming in, after Mumbai civic body demolished a more than 100-year-old cross in Bandra, the community there is staging a silent protest today. This cross was raised on Sunday by the BMC and the BMC, in fact, has now directed authorities to approach the court. Let me go across to Herman. He's joining us now for more on this. Herman, uh, first of all, tell us more about this silent protest which is being organized by the residents there in Bandra and what is the BMC's approach towards it? Well, if you do remember, the incident did take place on Saturday where a cross was demolished at Bandra West. Uh, remember the reason as to why the locals and not just from the Christian community but across community have gathered today here for a silent protest. The reason being that saying that the cross that was demolished had all the legal papers. It was part of government surveys, yet how could it be demolished? And this remember yesterday after even a meeting was conducted by BJP Mumbai president as well as the local MLA Ashish Shela, uh, things for now have definitely not changed much despite having that meeting yesterday with various stakeholders. Uh, what we are now given to understand is that BMC has directed the authorities to approach court and that is where the next battle is going to be fought. The BMC on its part has been adamant right from day one. They have not been responding uh, to various other media queries as to whether, uh, you know, whenever we try to address, ask them as to what, uh, on what grounds was the cross demolished, they did not have the definite answers. But now what we are given to understand is that they have uh, reached out to the authorities and have now decided, asked them to approach court. Uh, and the demand here still remains the same at the silent protest, saying then that the cross needs to be restored by the very same authorities, which is the BMC. रामविलास पासवान जी की पार्टी में से आया हुआ पहली बार का विधायक नहीं बोल रहा ये सिर्फ मुखौटा है इसके पीछे से कोई और बोल रहा है जीवन में ना कभी चीफ मिनिस्टर बनना है ना डिप्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर बनना है ना पार्टी अध्यक्ष बनना है ना कोई पॉलिटिकल पार्टी ज्वाइन करनी है ना कोई स्वराज आंदोलन ज्वाइन करना है लेकिन वो कार्यकर्ता जिस, जिसको कोई नहीं जानता जो पोस्टर चुपकाता था जो आपके लड़ता था आप उस पर लात मत मारिए पार्टी संगठन कोई भी नाराज होगा कोई सरकार कोई व्यवस्था तो मैं आवाज बंद नहीं करूंगा मैं लगातार बोलूंगा भारतीय सेना के लिए ऐसा संदेश दिया जिससे गलत मैसेज गया तो हमें कोर्स करेक्शन करना पड़ेगा पिछली बार की तरह की चीजें होंगी गंदगी फैलाई जाएगी चीटे फैलाए जाएंगे इमेज टैनिश करने की कोशिश की जाएगी पार्टी में पीएससी की मीटिंग में इस बात पर चर्चा हुई कि कुमार विश्वास आज इस मीटिंग में नहीं आए वो भी इंटरव्यू दे रहे हैं वीडियो जारी कर रहे हैं मुझे पार्टी में लेके इसको भी नाराजगी थी अरविंद जी इन दोनों चीजों को लेके पार्टी के पीएससी के लोग भी और अरविंद जी भी काफी आहत है इस चीज को लेकर की बाहर बयानबाजी कर रहे हैं कुछ लोग मैं पीएससी की तरफ से पार्टी की तरफ से सभी कार्यकर्ताओं को सभी पदाधिकारियों को कहना चाहता हूं कि बयानबाजी करने की कतई जरूरत नहीं है जिसको जिससे जो शिकायत है अरविंद जी मिलते हैं यहां पे हम लोग मिलते हैं सबसे आके मिलें लेकिन ये बयानबाजी से इस सबसे दिल्ली का नुकसान हो रहा है पार्टी का नुकसान हो रहा है
Well, after a father was forced to carry his son's body on his shoulder after hospital failed to provide a stretcher and ambulance, State Minister Siddharth Nath Singh has a short action in the matter. Let's listen to what he had to say. Look, this is a very serious issue and it is also a pain. And I can say that there is no doctor or no paramedical मेरे रजीम के अंदर इतना असंवेदनशील नहीं हो सकता और कोई भी इतना असंवेदनशील होएगा तो उसके ऊपर उसका ठीकरा पुटेगा उसके ऊपर बहुत सख्त और कठोर कार्रवाई करूंगा मैं और इसलिए कल ही सीएमओ से उसकी रिपोर्ट मांगी गई है और वो उम्मीद है कि अभी तक मेरे टेबल पे आ जानी चाहिए नहीं आएगी तो तुरंत तलब किया जाएगा कोई बचाने की भी कोशिश करेगा तो उसके साथ भी वही करा जाएगा जिस व्यक्ति ने इतनी घिनौनी हरकत करी है मैं इसको टॉलरेट नहीं करूंगा इसको बर्दाश्त नहीं करूंगा और पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में किसी ने भी सिविल अस्पताल के अंदर किसी भी बच्चे को देखा नहीं और किसी को अपना बच्चे का या किसी का भी शव कंधे या इस प्रकार से ले जाना पड़ा तो उसके साथ बहुत ही बहुत कठोर कार्रवाई होगी an oil tanker overturned inside the Kolkata airport and those are the visuals that you can see on your screen now that has led to oil spill and looking at the pictures it looks like a massive oil spill that we can see as far as this Kolkata airport is concerned for more on this let me now go across to my colleague Tamal Saha who joins us on the phone line Tamal give us more details how did this really happen you know this happened early this morning uh, near gate number six near the apron area while this oil tanker was on its way to load an aircraft uh, we do not know whether it was high speed speed or any other technical fault that uh, uh, the driver lost control of the vehicle and the vehicle overturned leading to massive oil spill. What you've been given to understand there was some sort of a spark and that's how the panic button was pressed and immediately uh, people from the airport authority had rushed to the spot to ensure the situation doesn't go out of hand. At the moment the oil spill has been controlled, the truck has been taken away but then both the driver and the helper of the oil tanker had sustained grievous injuries because it happened all of a sudden. We do not know as I said whether it was high speed or not but at the moment investigation is on and uh, things are uh, very much under control back to you a bjp mlc from karnataka created a flutter by posting nude pictures of women on whatsapp that's the latest that we are getting for you for more details let me now go across to my colleague uh, uh, deepak i believe who is with us on the phone line deepak uh, give us more details what has really happened well, an embarrassing moment to say the least for the mlc from the bjp this is uh, Kap, uh, this is mantesh uh, kaptagi math he's an mlc from uh, belgavi now it said that it was a uh, it was a group named media, belgavi media force this uh, group includes several politicians of the of the region. It includes several senior police officers, including the SP. It also includes several uh, journalists as well. Now, all of a sudden, uh, the MNC posts uh, these images, and uh, several people were taken aback. Probably, it was by mistake that he posted these images of the group, but nonetheless, reflects on the mindset of the MNC at this point in time. What's surprising is that uh, no action whatsoever has been taken because. Considering the fact that police officers were also a part of this group, they knew who posted it, they knew which number it hmm. came from. Uh, no investigations whatsoever have, have uh, really revealed in any sort of arrest up until now. Times Now accesses exclusive pictures of the mastermind and executor of the attack on a cash van in Kulgam that left seven people, including five policemen, dead. His will commander Umar Bajid, along with two other, carried out this deadly attack, killing seven and also taking away four automatic rifles. Police uh, the sources tell Times Now that relentless combing operations and raids are being carried out to track down Umar Bajid and his group, who are believed to be hiding in the forest area. Mir Farid, my colleague, on the phone line for more on this. Uh, Farid, this is a significant achievement now. At least uh, uh, this man has been identified and of course we understand that um, uh, a relentless combing operation and manhunt is still underway. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, these pictures uh, are of Umar Majid, uh, exclusive pictures that Times Now has accepted. And, uh, in fact, he uh, is said to be the mastermind and the executor of uh, the deadly Kulgam cash van attack where we saw seven people uh, getting killed in this ambush, five policemen and two bank uh, guards. Uh, they also took away four automatic rifles, uh, one of the deadliest attacks of recent times and uh, an attack that has really hurt uh, the GNK police very badly and that's why there are counter ops uh, that are on and away. Our sources in the police uh, tell us that uh, relentless combing and operations and raids are being carried out uh, uh, across Kulgam and especially in the forest area as uh, the police feel that after carrying out this attack, 
uh, Omar Majid along with two of his accomplices has slipped into the forest area and there uh, they are trying to track him down. Now, uh, obviously, in, in fact, in the last some time, these attacks have increased, uh, especially the weapon snatching bids. Uh, just last night, again, uh, there were five weapons that were taken away from a court complex, not in Kulbam, though, in Shopian, but again in South Kashmir. Uh, but yes, this guy is uh, someone who has been active from the last three, four years, uh, has come up the Hezbollah ranks, and especially after uh, the attack in Kulgam, uh, the top Hezbollah commanders uh, not only appreciated him, but also uh, announced a cash reward for him. So that, of course, makes him one of the most wanted. And uh, this is the exclusive picture that Times now has accessed of the main accused uh, against whom uh, security forces are right now carrying out relentless operations. Back to you. Seven suspects have now been arrested in Manoj Tiwari's house attack incident. The Delhi BJP chief's house was attacked on uh, Sunday and night. The, uh, of course, uh, the Delhi police has been investigating this particular case. We are now told uh, that uh, about seven suspects have been uh, arrested. Do remember that his house was broken into and was attacked on Sunday and night. Seven people have now been arrested in this particular attack. Uh, Sharon on the phone line. Sharon, give us more details. Uh, well, this uh, incident happened day before yesterday when uh, uh, there were uh, uh, thieves who had got inside uh, uh, Manoj Tiwari's residence after which he filed a police complaint and uh, even the police did a press conference and the latest that we're getting is that seven people have been arrested in this matter and an investigation is going on that wh what was the reason that they uh, got into the house and uh, what all they have done, uh, what all have they recovered from the house. So uh, police will be uh, continuing with the investigation and will uh, come to a point uh, that why these people entered Manoj Siwari's house and uh, was there a, a different motive because remember Manoj Siwari also made it a point that there is some political motive behind this. So what exactly is the reason that these assaulters uh, went inside the house and assaulted the worker of Manoj Siwari will be investigated further. Uh, this is just the beginning of the pro process uh, but it, it, that one thing is for sure that after uh, going through the charges filed by the crime branch of Delhi police in which multiple arrests have also, also taken place the enforcement directorate clearly thinks that this is a strict case of money laundering, and mm -hmm. it also, you know, because there is a, a, there are there are reasons to believe that there have been large transfer, transfers of unaccounted and uh, unaccounted and ill-gotten cash that has transferred hands mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, purportedly bribe the uh, enforcement, uh, purportedly bribe the election commission officials. I beg your pardon. Yes. And therefore, the enforcement directorate clearly thinks that of that, those slush funds, parking of those slush funds, and, uh, you know, overall uh, attempt to bribe is an, is an offense that calls for a money laundering case. Therefore, a PMLA case has been registered. The principal player, of course, remains CTV Dinakaran. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. there are others also who are supposed to have supported him, and these, this can become then very serious because these can probably be the member of the present cabinet and the present government of Samuel Khan. Because right. the generation of funds, the enforcement directorate clearly thinks has taken place at an official level in mm -hmm. which uh, intervention of outside agencies would not have been possible without inside. Yes, Nikunj, very quickly also, I would like to know, has the uh, enforcement directorate be able, has been able to actually trace the money trail back to TTV Dinakaran? Because we know he denied all links to Chandrasekhar uh, Sukesh. So are we now saying that that case has been more or less established? Well, uh, it, prima facie, the ED in its enforcement wisdom believes, in its wisdom believes that the a money laundering case exists. And that case, uh, you know, obviously they will have to substantiate it in a court of law. Yes. And that case itself will prove, uh, you know, all these money sales and from where do they originate and who are the initial source of the flood fund when we talk of 50 to 60 crore rupees being generated for bribe money amounts. So mm -hmm. therefore, the enforcement directorate has registered a uh, case. Probe has begun in right earners today. And at least the agency thinks that they would be able to trace the original source of those slush funds. Okay, so will the ED be able to join the dots and uh, make a watertight case against DTV Dinakaran? Uh, that remains to be seen. Many thanks, Nikunj, for joining us. Let's go across uh, to our correspondent for more information on this. Uh, Mir Farid joining us. Yes, Farid. incident in a matter of uh, 24 hours. Although, uh, if you talk about the previous incident that happened yesterday, it was not a cash loot attempt, but an attempt uh, to cause casualties on the police and take away weapons. But this one, uh, for sure, is an attempt to loot a bank. Ilakai Dihati Bank, uh, Kulgam branch, uh, was attacked. Uh, in fact, the uh, uh, attempt uh, to rob the bank was done by suspected militants. Our sources say at least two to three of them 
uh, armed entered the bank and looted some cash. We do not know yes. as of now how much cash has been taken away. But as could be seen in the first visuals we're getting from the spot, area has been completely sealed off by forces. Uh, quick reaction teams immediately getting activated and the uh, area has been completely cordoned off. Search operation has been launched. Our sources say that the police believe that uh, these assailants may not have uh, gone far away. They could be still trapped in the area and that's why the search operation is being conducted door to door, house to house search on right now to track them down. But uh, alarming situation nonetheless uh, because these incidents are only uh, growing. They're happening at a very uh, uh, frequent rate and uh, in 24 hours, second search incident, though the last one was massive where seven right. people were killed, this one more of an uh, attempt to rob the bank. Yes, but you know, the onus is also on the state government at this point, isn't it, to make sure that there is enough security in these kind of institutions uh, like banks, which are being targeted repeatedly, Fareed? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, uh, previously, uh, if you talk of uh, the insurgency history, uh, banks have not been targeted this frequently. Uh, yes. Now there seems to be some kind of a strategy wherein uh, either they are cash-trapped, they need more cash, so they're attacking these banks, they're uh, targeting a vulnerable uh, targets considering that the banks do not have a lot of security and that too there are certain branches which are far away and even if uh, they're attacked it will take some time for the uh, security forces to reach the spot so these uh, these these banks are uh, being targeted uh, meticulously and uh, there definitely there needs to be a strategy now to secure these banks right. uh, though it is impossible to secure each and every one because there would be thousands of bank branches or different banks so Mm. Uh, still, there needs to be something that needs to be worked out to stop this uh, because uh, the way it's going, okay. uh, more banks will be targeted. But right, right. now, uh, this bank has been targeted and search and combing effort on. Okay. This morning, a four-member uh, joint team of Enforcement Directorate and the Central Bureau of Investigation officials have uh, reached uh, London. Three members of that team are from the Central Bureau of Investigation, run from the Enforcement Directorate. Now, you remember that both the investigative agencies are probing Vijay Malia for separate offences. The predicate offence in the case, the principal offence in the case, has been uh, registered by the Central Bureau of Investigation, which is in a case of willful uh, loan defraud by Vijay Malia in IDBI bank case uh, for the first time in the history of independent India top banking executives of the IDBI bank their former CMD etc were also jailed for that offense following yes. that case uh, the enforcement directorate registered a case of money laundering which means that the uh, Vijay Malia's companies willfully siphoned off that public funds to his own companies and that la then laundered that cash for his personal gains uh, in fact to offshore accounts and properties too so now the first port of call as far as this team is concerned the first port of call for this team would be uh, with the crown prosecution service crown prosecution service would is the service that in the entire extradition process would be leading and assisting both they have the twin roles of leading and assisting both the Indian teams. Now remember that Indian teams, even with the help of an attorney, cannot at this stage, cannot at this stage represent their case. It is the Crown Prosecution Service of the government of United Kingdom that will have to fight this case. Okay. Uh, at least at this stage of the very beginning of the trial process at a trial magistrate's court in Westminster. Mm -hmm. So Indian authorities will have to properly present their case first to the Crown Prosecution Service, uh, pr produce all the evidence that they have so far gathered in their case, produce all the documents translated properly in English and the necessary requirements of documents that the Crown Prosecution Service then from here on can raise. And right. therefore, therefore mm -hmm. this team has gone nearly 15 days, a fortnight in advance, so that if there is any additional requirement of documents from the CPS's side, that can be fulfilled very, very quickly before that first date of hearing at in that extradition court at Westminster on 17th of this month. Okay, so we will look out for those developments and we'll come back to you for more updates. Uh, many thanks, Nikunj, for giving us the latest information.